Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to machine learning. In this video, we will be doing a short recap of the probability theory. Let's jump right in. Imagine we're having a experiment where we have three different boxes and we take out marbles from each box multiple times because we are interested what are the probabilities of our marbles taken from the different boxes. First, we have to define two random variables. In our case, that will be the color cover of uh, sorry the color of the box and the color of the marble. So for the color of the marble, we have x1 and x2 because we have blue and purple. For the color of our box, we have y1, 2, and 3, and this is orange, light blue, and dark blue. And if we now perform our experiment multiple times, we can count how many times our marble that we took from a random box, so a random marble from a random box, has, for example, specifically the color blue and taken from the orange box. So this is our, basically, if we sort our results of that experiment that we do, where we take marbles, marbles from the box, we can say we had, we performed an experiment 10 times, and we got exactly if n11 is equal to blue, from blue is our marble and orange is our box, we can say that n11 was equal to 2. So we performed our experiment 10 times and two of those times we had x11, uh, x1 and y1. So if we don't care about one or the other variable, we can just say we're interested in all of the occurrences where x was a specific uh, occur or occurrence of our random variable. So for example, x was just blue or for example, it was just purple. So we will have c1 and c2. The same goes for the other variable where we can just look at the random variable y and see how many times that occurred, regardless of what occurred with the other variable. And now we can define probabilities. So the first one is the marginal probability. So what is the probability that if we're performing our experiment where we take the marbles, that for example, our marble is blue or our marble is or, uh, purple. Then we have the joint probability. That is the probability that our marble is blue and comes from the orange box or that our marble is blue and comes from the light blue box. Then we have the conditional probability. The conditional probability is the probability that we have a given x, we have a x given a certain y. So what is the color, what is the probability of a blue marble given that we're taking from the orange box? So this is our probability, uh, the conditional probability. Now we can also say that we have a independent variables if our probability x, y, and y, j, so our joint probability, is equal to just a multiplication of those probabilities. And if they are independent, the probability of x given y doesn't depend on y and is equal to just the probability of x. Now we have probability rules. The first one is the marginal probability, where we can say if we just care about one probability or, or just one value of our random variables, we can sum over the j, so over all y's that we have. So we have, for example, if we're interested in probability of the marble blue, this is equal because we're interested in the blue. So this is equal to the probability of marble blue given or the orange box, sorry, not given, the probability of blue and orange plus the prob probability of blue given the light blue box and the probability of our blue marble and the dark sorry the dark blue box so it, we sum up so we marginalize over our variable y and get the probability of x then we have the sum rule probability this is exactly what we did right here so we have some probability is equal to the marginalized probability to get this what we had before. So 
the marginal probability is, uh, we get the marginal probability by the sum rule. Then we have the joint probability. So what is the probability of X and Y? So we have X and Y. And this is just the same as dividing the number where each variable occurred or the specific instant of this variable occurred by the total variables. And we can extend this term by adding a CI and CI here. And we will get this rule. So we have the probability of Y given X times the probability of X. And this will equal to probability of X and Y. So if we have a joint uh, a uh, conditional probability, we can multiply it with the marginal probability, this one right here, and get the joint probability. The last one is the product rule of probability. So this is exactly what we applied right here to get the joint probability. So we have probability of X and Y is equal to probability of Y given X times Y. And then again, we have, because this and this is equal, we can just rewrite it as the probability of x given y times the probability of y. If we now use this product rule and reformulate it to just give us one term, we will come to the bias rule. And the bias rule is very, very important for us because we will use it many, many times in our machine learning. So the conditional probability, that's what we had before, is this one. So we took the product rule and just reformulate it to give us one term, or in this case, we took, let me get rid of this, get rid of this. So we had this one, and now we're interested in just in that one. So we divide this by PX, and we will get exactly this expression. So the probability of Y given X is exactly the probability of X given y times the probability of y divided by x. And in general, it, you have to remember that the probability is not symmetric. So probability of y given x is not the same as x given y. So now we can summarize. We have the sum rule that we have in a discrete and a continuous case. So in the discrete case, this is exactly what we did before. And now if we have a continuous case, so we have a continuous variable, we have to take the integral over the variable that we marginalize over. So in this case, if we are interested in x, we do the integral over y. We also have the product rule. So product, product of the joint probability x and y is probability of y given x times probability of x. And again, the base rule where we have probability of y because of the sum rule, we get probability of x given y times probability of y divided by x. Now to a short example to understand how we can use the probability uh, or the Bayes rule. So let's say we're testing for allergies and we have a test that is positive if we have an allergy that is 80%. So in 80% of the cases, it gives us the true answer, but sometimes it gives us a positive result even though we have no allergies, and that is 10%. The probability of having allergies in general is 1%. So now we are interested. Well, what is the probability of having an allergy if the test is positive? So we can just use the Bayes rule and reformulate. So we have the probability of positive given an allergy times the probability of an allergy divided by the test being positive. Now, what is the test positive? Here we can use our, this rule that we used, where is it? We had this one right here. So we use our, to get the probability of the test positive, we get the probability of the test positive given an allergy times an allergy plus the test being positive if we have no allergy, given, uh, given no allergy times the probability of not having an allergy. And we know all these numbers, so we have 0 0.8 from here. The probability of having an allergy is very low, so 1%. We have, that's supposed to 0. 0.1 is the probability of having the positive test given no allergy times 
one, this is the probability of no allergy, is one minus probability of allergy. And we get 0 0.107. Now we can insert all these numbers right here. And this is what we get. And we see that if we have an allergy, uh, if we have a positive test, so given a positive test, the probability of having an allergy is 7%. This comes from the fact that having allergies in general is already very, very low. And this influences us for the positive test. So this uh, example can be also done with, for example, having cancer if the test is positive and positive if the test uh, if having cancer. And you will come to the same result because having cancer is such a rare uh, occurrence that even if the test is positive, you will have uh, a very, very low chance of actually having cancer. I hope this video gave you a better understanding or just a recap of our probability functions uh, of our uh, theory of probability. In the next videos, we will talk about the covariance, the variance, the expected value and so forth. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.